happy to see everyone for being part of CTFC 2021. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Pradeep Tabanaji, a professor of civil engineering and Center for Urban Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay, in which he is a former head. He is also a former director of IIT Roorkee. He has more than 38 years of academic and research experience, including supervision of more than 70 postgraduate and doctoral candidates. He has more than 100 publications to his name. He has a BTEC degree from IIT Delhi, MS and PhD degree from UC Berkeley. He has many prestigious teaching and research awards. He has also delivered some of the most prestigious national lectures in India and keynote lectures in international conferences. He is a member, fellow, chair of several committees and professional societies across the world. He has developed many, many popular courses for working professionals in the field of structural engineering and urban sustainability. He has been on the board of several companies in the past 15 years. He has been a short-term consultant to the World Bank Group for developing innovative academic and research programs in STEM at high schools and universities in sub saharan Africa. He is known internationally for innovative developments on bridge asset management and disaster resilience. Recently, he has focused on sustainable habitat and quality of life issues in urban India. Really great, sir. Thank you, sir, for being here to grace the occasion. With this very brief introduction, now I invite sir to give keynote address. Uh, urban Observatory uh, and uh, on campus. And this is something that I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, in this uh, talk. In fact, the, 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 the thing of my talk is that it was just these, a case for urban observatories in India. Just wanted to give you a brief preview of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be uh, uh, you know, giving a little bit background of Smart Cities. Uh, the Smart Cities mission uh, is one of the flagship uh, Missions of the government of India uh, of what is called as today is called the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs or in short, OMA. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about of the execution currently on research. On research in the sense that not all of them have actually come into uh, being. Uh, I want to actually look at some of the aspects that need addressing because uh, not everything has been uh, kind of looked at uh, in terms of what are the future. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the case for urban observatories and some of the issues associated with the uh, urban observatory concept itself. And I'll end with uh, what, in my opinion, is the way forward for future cities. Uh, if you, uh, and this, this, what I'm, I'm talking about is is actually available online uh, under the Smart Cities mission. Because I think it, it's it's a it's a good point to look at some of the things, and it's uh, you know livability whatever that means. Uh, and this is this is not my uh, word. This is a word that I picked up from the Smart Vision Objective. Economic ability and sustainability. All of these are actually buzzwords. You know, livability, sustainability, you hear that literally everywhere. And uh, to a certain extent, 
I'm not very really clear what deliverability means and what sustainability means. It means different things to different people. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the overall aspect of the smart cities is economic development and quality of life. Again, you know, we've been doing economic development for God knows how many years. And what do we mean by quality of life? You know, and again, I, I, I wanted to point out that a quality of life to me would be very different for quality of life for a youngster and someone who don't live. Okay, so therefore these are some of the things that we have to understand. Uh, other thing that the Smart Mission, uh, Smart City Mission talks about is governance and reforms, citizen friendly. And my question again here is the following. Wasn't governance supposed to be citizen friendly? You know, so 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 there are several issues, land use, housing and inclusivity. Uh, one of the major issues that almost all uh, you know, plans, future plans of cities actually revolve around this. If you look at the uh, strategic plan of Mumbai 2030, it almost exclusively focuses on this. Then the other aspect is what is known as, they call it as TOD, transit oriented development. Now, again, this is not something that's new. If you remember in the 19th century, when uh, railway came to India, almost always, you know, you had development around the railways. So, in a way, what I'm trying to say is that we are actually packaging literally everything that mixed use transportation networks. I mean, you know, obviously no public transportation is going to come to your house. Okay? So always we walked or, or took some other seat. So these are all all I'm trying to say is preserving and developing green and blue spaces. Again, uh, green and blue spaces has become a very a buzzword. It's nothing but open spaces, green and blue spaces, water bodies. Okay, so this again is something that we know these are required in any city for it to be livable. And this is where I'm saying that you see, smart cities talks a lot about this. But ultimately, what we know about the smart city mission is really these last two aspects. Smart solutions, technology, information, data. To a certain extent, it again focuses on, on things, technology. For example, you know, this is integrated traffic management systems, uh, smart metering, uh, recycling, water management. Uh, you see, uh, smart metering has two aspects to it. One is water metering, one is electricity. So all of this is is what is focus of and pretty much this part of it is something that the smart city mission, although it's catered on information data, you know, so many things that we can do. Uh, you know, traffic management systems is, for example, traffic, the, the fundamental traffic management system that we used to have was lights, traffic signals, and off and on, right? Today we are talking about intelligent traffic management systems. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, my, my point that I'm trying to make here is uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the future cities, uh, the entire but we need to be very sure. I mean, like for example, I just wanted to give you an example here. Uh, I was involved with the Smart City Pune. I mean, uh, and uh, they were talking about uh, smart party. Okay. Uh, and I just asked them one question. 
the smart parking is that you know you can on your street you can get on your phone you can get the parking is available you can go there and everything the the featuring is is done through your phone etc etc. I just one question to you: How much parking is available here? We sometimes forget the basic things, and that's why I wanted to go back to this, and that is that without this. Without development, without provision of services, what are you? What technology, information, data is going to give you? It's not going to give you more parking. It's not going to give you, uh, you know, brilliant traffic. It's not going to give you all of those. So the whole idea of India is that climate smart cities, address climate change. Data smart cities enable data to address complex challenges. Unified residence, secure smart infrastructure. See, of course, all of these are very important. This is very, very important. Climate change is happening. How are we going to address resilience? Today we talk about resilient communities. Resilient communities has become especially in Mumbai. Okay, um, uh, at least the climate scientists say that in the next 50 years, 50% of the communities that exist on the coast cannot exist. So how do we? How are we going to be resilient to that? So, so to a certain extent, you know, climate smart cities is a very great idea. But it's not about technology. It's about humanity, communities. How do we engage the communities to to make it how to make the cities climate smart? Data smart, of course. Leverage data to address. Earlier, this is the point. I mean, collecting data is part of of what the existence of cities are. Without data, you cannot take a decision. Okay. Today, we are using smart ways of collecting data. Of course, one of the things that comes with, with infrastructure, with this kind of, uh, you know, wherever you're collecting data on the go, it becomes secure. Secure, security is, is a big thing. And this is the reason why a lot of our education and, and kind of things that we look at focuses so cyber security is, is, is going to be very important in this. Resilience. You know, if your data network collapses, unless you build in resilience into your data network, okay, you must have noticed, for example, uh, you know, when you're trying to get some information, okay, and we keep hearing recently, uh, you know, for six hours, the entire Microsoft network was down. Okay, that's not resilience. Right. So that's why I'm saying that you know, and unified. It's very important to unify because today what's happening is, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this, is that uh, we have silos. Everywhere we have silos. You know, literally, nobody's talking to anybody else, and so everybody comes up with their own way of collecting data. Okay. The data. We're getting the data from same same department. Okay. Now each subset of the department was producing data in its own mind, trying to make sense of that data, and and then talking about smart infrastructure. Unless it's a unified, it's not a word. Okay. So that's something that we need to look at. Uh, again, this is something data maturity assessment framework. Okay, uh, this is again an assessment of of whether your your systems are uh, the same. Then, then they talk about the smart cities open data portal. These are all executions that are thought of. Okay, uh, you know, great ideas. I think they have uh, you know, for example, the national urban digital mission. Thanks to the pandemic, has actually 
happen really, really fast. The digital mission, national urban digital mission, is 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 happening. You know, all our all our services are available at home. So that is something uh, that uh, the thing. The other thing is, uh, you know, what are known as city command and control centers. Uh, this is again all of this should come in the smart cities aspect. And, and, and I'll, I'll come back to these, some of these uh, a little bit later. Uh, and again, you know, <laughs> to a certain extent, uh, from a shed marker, kind of stole a bit of my thunder. <laughs> uh, for example, you know, development of sensors for market market. What are the things that you need to do? Okay. Today, the air quality that you get in Mumbai is actually of two or three places where the, the IMD has sensors. There already exists sensors at academic which can look at air quality. In fact, you know, gas sensors. These are uh, there is already something that's happening in Mumbai where some 84 low cost sensors are being deployed across the city. So, so the whole point is we have to develop sensors, water quality sensors, okay, metal, uh, you know, uh, and water quality, when I say water quality, it, these are distributed, it needs to be not just one or two places, it needs to be, it needs to tell me uh, at the point of use, what's the water quality, that's the kind of distributed sensors that we are looking at, okay, uh, use of, the, you know, uh, IoT and IoE, Coordinated collection. We need to work with mobile companies. You know, I, we 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 went just before the pandemic. Uh, we had a India Taiwan network. You know, and I I found out that, uh, for example, real time uh, traffic information is actually being collected by uh, because everybody has a 5G phone. Uh, you know, and through that system, you're collecting. Data. So you know all of this. Of course, you need. To, they need. They are working. Uh, you know, Taiwan is a small company. A small country with just one, uh, you know, mobile network. And so they, their things are easy. Here we need to work with mobile companies. Because mobile companies may not give you the, uh, you know, the information about where that information is coming from. Because one of the things with sensors is you need to have unique identifiers. Uh, every day. Okay. Citizen involvement in the process. Today, it's almost top down. Uh, it's almost it, it kind of implied that the city government understands what good for the citizens. You know, not always. And how do we involve the citizens? In a certain state, that if they become part of the data collection, then they, they get invested in the process. Okay, GIS, you know, geographical information systems for land use and property definition. Mm. You know, again, it, an aspect that requires addressing. Let me let me give you an example of the real world how it would be difficult. Uh, we were asked by the city of Delhi when I was. Uh, rookie, rather than the city of the to do a, a property definition exercise to GIS so that property taxes could be collected offline. And you know, it would be a transparent process. Uh, when, I, when my people went to do the GIS kind of work, they're weak now. They're weak now. And of course, you know, we asked the police for for security, it didn't happen. Why? Property in India, land use in cities is a very, very gray area. A lot of times, people do not want to we analyze the data for decision making. And of course, again, you know, uh, Professor Shikamba talked about, well, you know, analysis of data for decision making, use artificial intelligence. Okay? The 
Other thing that requires transparent protocols for quality of life. You know, quality of life today is like you know, you provide open spaces, you provide uh, you know good transportation, uh, you provide this, you provide that, uh, you improve your air quality. And I think the quality of life definition is different from for an old for an old man or old person, not man, old person. The most I mean that person does not give a thing about inclusion transportation management. That person wants health care. For that person, quality of life involves health care in the locality. Good health care in the locality. That's what you know, and of course a good uh, you know house to stay. That for an old person is what required. For a young, very young person, what's required? Education. Access to universal education. A good public transportation system. So as I say, what I'm trying to say is we need to have absolutely transparent protocols for quality of life. What do you mean by quality of life? We need to identify those and talk about how we're, how we're going to produce that. Because one of the things of the smart city mission is implied in it although it doesn't stay, is to monetize, is to monetize city service. And when you monetize until and unless you talk to stakeholders, monetization is not going to happen. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, go where, uh, you know, uh, go straight to the urban observatories. You know, why urban observatories are important. Uh, in 2015, the government of India started the Smart Cities Mission. In 2016, there was a UK India Steering Committee on Urban Observatories. The UK actually is quite advanced in the whole concept of uh, the city, and India wanted to learn from that. Uh, 2016 to 18, under the Smart City Mission, a lot of cities got command and control centers, which are which are essentially a one place where all the data was being collected on various aspects. In February 2019, the Urban Observatory Project launched with video hall in Mahua, Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs. The thing that they had was Air quality index in Delhi. Again, because it was only in Delhi, so they were looking at air quality. So the wall, the video wall, gave air quality index in Delhi. But again, air quality index in Delhi only in the IMD stations. And proposed crowdsourcing of cleanliness, the Swatch Bharat mission. Okay, that was the proposed crowdsourcing. Now I want to, you know, so this is, this is. What has happened? Now my question here is that we need to go in the urban observatory much, much further. And when we want to go much, much further, what are the strengths that we have? Okay. One of the major strengths in India is that under the government of India, there are various issues. Smart cities, urban renewal, heritage conversation, first power, drinking water, smart grid, we, uh, of course, involved in this, and the ministry is not part of it. Okay. So, so the whole point is, of course, is funding it. Government and control centers and municipalities provide the backbone for data collection. There's a backbone. That is there. In certain cities, data is beginning to come in on traffic, air quality, and solid waste management collection of, uh, and these are things that I have, my, this is, this is actually things that I have seen myself. Uh, another great thing is, is very important, and that is awareness in municipalities of the importance of data in governance. It, it cannot, I mean, you know, until and unless people who dealt with municipalities on a day-to-day -day basis, this is a huge threat. The fact that cities, city governments are actually aware that you, the governance can help in data uh, and governance. Uh, 
some of these is what I'm saying that these are some of the current concepts. Uh, and by the way, this, this is essentially these tools can come under the open observation and think what that is. So these are things that are already there. Okay, smart features for energy management, air quality, smart features of recycling, of water, of water, of water management, solid waste management, and traffic management. To a certain extent, these, uh, you know, the integrated traffic management systems and sound cities have already come into it. What are the basic needs that a human, human being needs? One is mobility. And I just leave it at mobility. Because mobility for different people means different things. Okay? The mobility can also mean intercity. It could be in the locality, it could be intra-locality. So mobility is something that you know, they basically get from point A to point B, where, wherever that point A and point B are. Environment. The environment, the various aspects of the environment that are important. One is water, air and noise. Okay. Those are aspects that go into the environment. Energy. Today, and you know, if you're looking at more and more sensors and all of those, energy becomes a huge issue that we need to address. Water. Water, not just quantity, but quality. Waste. Waste can be, you know, grey water or it will be solid waste. These are aspects that need to be looked at. Health. When I say health, you know, it could be very very And security. Health and security are issues that need to be addressed. Resilience. We cannot control the environment. The resilience is our ability to adapt and continue the livability and the quality of life under those kinds of situations. And of course economic development, without economics nothing works. And the whole point here is that we require government, citizen, and I'm, I'm being extremely, I'm, I'm being extremely sick about it. The first is government. Without government, nothing can happen. Then the citizen. The citizen needs to be involved in all of this. Then comes academia. Why academia? Because if there's any new development or any back end kind of situation, academia is almost inevitably has to be part of it. And industry. Why industry? Because to a certain extent, industry is an equal stakeholder in economic point of time. As I say, you know, I I I, I get up very clear. There's no comprehensive vision. Every silo which is to live in a silo. Okay? So that is something that is very important. Link between provision of resources and data requirements. This is something, you know, today what happens is, and I'm telling you very frankly, is that a lot of the money under a, a, a telecom policy for this. Development of protocols for data, unified data, you're gone. That's a vulnerability and misuse of data. Uh, this is something that is very, I mean, and this was discussed. For example, media gets, uh, you know, if we uh, hand up, uh, you know, hand up some data and it becomes a huge issue. Okay, so these are some of the things that we need to be very careful about. The security of data needs to be looked at. And one of the major issues is the fastest growing towns, the tier 2 and tier 3 cities, have no finance. So all of this is going to fail unless they have a finance fee. And of course, as I said, vertical side of structures. The traffic department does not traffic department the police. Police are not going to talk to, uh, you know, the city, uh, you know, water. And so that's why you have the situation where someone builds, uh, you know, uh, the, the road department builds a uh, road, new road, and next day the water department comes in and, uh, you know, uh, starts putting a water pipe. 
this is a vertical with a thread and you need to figure out how to how to break through this vertical side. These are the things that are extremely difficult. But if you don't do this, the future of cities is not right. You know, this is what we're saying that India is at a cusp in cities. Some efforts are on much more. Okay. Comprehensive vision to mission for efficacy of the urban observatory. I mean, yeah, what is how is the how is urban observatory different from the command and control center? Command and control center gets data. Urban observatories are are where the entire process of analysis and the decision making, you know, which which is sometimes very difficult for cities to imagine to, to do that. So urban observatories are going to be the kind of place from which these kind of things can flow out. One of the, as I say, you know, we did the UK India thing and, and the UK people came in and one of the things that happens is the UK people came in and say, okay, we're going to do this, we suggest you do this. And one of the things I say is, experience from abroad are abroad and important. But size of issues in India are several orders of magnitude higher. Larger. Okay, it's it's something that we need to struggle with that ourselves. We need to come up. Frugal technology in sensors for people needed for scale implementation. There's a lot of frugal technology available in that academic. We need to scale implement that okay? to be able to get anywhere. Financing, as I say, one of the issues is financing processes requires demonstrable improvement in service from status quo. Okay. Urban observatory and the sustainability because resources, uh, you know, I mean, management of resources. In my, from a, from a technology point of view, what is sustainability? Management of resources, management of scarce resources. That needs to be connected at the end. So whatever decision making comes in, it needs to be aware of the fact that uh, you know resources need to be looked at. And, and, and the point that I'm trying to say is, why am I calling up talking about the sustainable development goals of this way? Because India is doing very very poorly. You know, we are almost one poverty, economic development is an aspect that needs to be looked at. SG3, health. More and more in cities, health is a major issue. And we need to be looking at that. SG6, so I'm, I'm just saying that at the city level, everybody looks at SG health and finishes it off. What we don't realize is all of these, SG6, clean water and sanitation, SG8, economic development, SG9, infrastructure, SG 13, climate action. All of these, I'm just saying that this is exactly what we're looking at. Everybody, everybody looks at everything in silos. And to actually bring in demonstrable change, we need to look at all of these in a, in a comprehensive and unified manner. Only then will we have any future in cities. Thank you. I went back to you on my time. Sorry. I mean, as, I, as I always tell in my classes, if there are no questions, my assumption is that I was a brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, sir.
One of the things you must uh, know that the, 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 you know the current information is managed by Google. Okay, uh, and and so to a certain extent, uh, you know, well, on a lighter note, uh, you can on Google find out where the portals are because even if there is no traffic, okay, you see yellow or red. Can I tell you that that road is not very good? But anyway, I mean, I just what I'm trying to say is that uh, you know, uh, to a certain extent, uh, this is where I'm talking about that uh, the way forward is to have technology, and I'm saying not technology in terms of uh, you know telling you where the pothole is, sensors to determine. I'm not saying that. See, see, that's 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 the immediate thing that you think of. And as a civil engineer, I think, you know, can I have a technology which ensures that there's no possible? Okay, that's a demonstrative, that's a demonstrative, you know, quality of life improvement. And a lot of the, and that's one of the things that, you know, because we're technologists, and because, you know, through, through a certain way, our lives are around sensors, uh, you know, and all of that, we seem to miss the obvious thing. And that's why I was saying that, you know, those first six things that, that's mentioned in the, uh, you know, the uh, Smart Vision Project, one of the last two talk about all of this, sensors and all of that, okay? We, let us not focus so much on the last two. The last two are important. I'm not, I'm not saying that the future of cities does will not be without those last two. Absolutely. But we need to look at the first six. And in my mind, we don't have portals. And, and by the way, let me also tell you, you know, there are lots of roads where certain improved technology has used, which is which is not costly. You know, one of the things everybody keeps saying is that oh that technology is going to be costly. It's not. It's just a question of how to put it. And my thinking process is rather than creating a sensor for pothole detection, can we not have the requirement for pothole sensors? That's my question to you. Next day itself, the water department takes it out and put the pipes inside it. Whole thing gets disrupted. As the question is in general citizens' mind, as well as in the mind of uh, a planner or uh, uh, urban expansion or urban developer like you, who are the committee members of majority of the committee, means it is sure that this this issue is getting discussed in the various meetings at government level also. So, what is the solution for that? How how we are going to solve that? To a certain extent, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I am a glass half full kind of. Actually, had has had a lot of effects. The effect is that because the command and control center, okay, which looks at traffic, looks at what are supposedly it's going to look at all of these issues. Uh, because everybody has to go to that particular point, there is already some amount of this talk across silos. So so it's happening. Okay. Uh, only thing in, in India, I always say, uh, you know, uh, I still remember there was a joke that I made uh, to someone who said, you know, uh, in, in China, everything gets built in, in, in two days, you know, and in India it takes three years. I always say that, you know, in India when it takes three years, after that, it's going to be there. In China, fourth day, someone else might think something that what has been built in two days may go away. In India, you know, the process takes time, but when it happens, it will happen. And my whole thought process is, it's because of this, see, when the command and control center concept happened, and you know, almost 70% of the money for the smart mission project, in the first five years, went into the command. Everybody said, so much of wasting. It's not. 
because you know in, in a way kind of provided that kind of backbone and so many people you know this service level agreements you know uh, uh, is all being done now it's becoming unified so it will happen my whole thought processes may not happen in my lifetime okay but hopefully it will happen in your life